just want to play a few arpeggios for you if you like me and you want to learn some new things and um, arpeggios are broken up chords where you play the notes individually as such so firstly I'm using sweet picking where your picking hand goes in one direction either down or up nice and slowly I'm playing the A minor arpeggio there's my root there's my flat third the C and there's my perfect fifth so there's a, a two string chord A minor once again root flat third perfect fifth root flat third perfect fifth now when you turn your gain or distortion up on your amplifier electric amplifier you're playing on a thin neck you and you sweep pick it it'll start sounding like um, your heroes Frank and Barley or Ingwie Malmsteen the world's greatest sweep pickers probably Gambali and then I'm playing a, a G major yeah, the seventh fret in a D shape you know the second fret it's a D so you count D E F G simple eh? sounds like Woody Woodpecker now you know where they got that tune from in Hollywood and um, and then I'm playing an augmented gives it that 18th century just to break up the mind it's that little like a D7 but it's near the 8th fret that's your D7 now there at the uh, second fret and then gives it that harpsichord 18th century sound just to break the sequence up and then I'm playing an E major fifth is a major chord then a minor chord is root minor third perfect fifth an augmented chord is root third and raised fifth sharp five and I want to show you another one talking about major chords here's E major the root the major third the A flat that's E major Seventh fret on the A string, it's root five because it's coming off the A string. I'm playing the A shape, but it's an E chord. And then likewise, E major seventh because I'm playing the flat, the flat, um, the E flat, which is the flat seventh. And then likewise. E major dominant seventh because the D is two notes below the root, the D note there, so it becomes the dominant seventh. Major seventh and dominant seventh. Now you get minor E to the flat third, E minor. Because there's your E minor shape, you well know. E minor major seventh and then E minor dominant seventh because there's the D note so you've learned quite a few arpeggios in less than five minutes now thanks for viewing I hope it helps you I'm going really slowly but like I say when you play on a thinner, thinner neck guitar you go a bit faster once you've got it and you get that ratchet sounding nice and smoothly you'll 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 be impressed by the sounds you start hearing then start adding extensions to your chord like um, 
might be difficult on this guitar, but like an A minor, an A minor 13 is a lovely chord to play the arpeggio on electric guitar, and you can reach iron. A 13 is a flat, um, a flat seven. Does it make sense? I think I might be lying to you, but. Um, uh, you can figure it out. Um, you get brilliant sounds when you play these things. I'm going to do a video on the A, um, either A11 and A13 and those on my electric guitar, and I can reach up higher. Yeah. You you can enjoy it because you can use it in your. Uh, progressions and um, thanks for viewing this film sorry it's early morning and um, but uh, I just want to thank you all for subscribing sitting at 495 this morning you know just a year ago two weeks short of a year ago and I had six subscribers and got 495 so I've picked up um, 489 in um, in 50 weeks and uh, the first six took me six years by the way but I wasn't such a frequent poster. But I appreciate that you're all showing so much interest. I need to get those viewing hours up um, to the magical figures. And so I'm trying to make slightly longer videos. Uh, thanks for being with me. Uh, my channel's very diverse. It's almost 1,300 videos up. A lot of them have three minute training sessions. Some of them are good, some of them have a huge amount of information. But you won't appreciate it until you actually look at them. I encourage you to go back. I've labeled them all if you open my channel up and, and sometimes you'll see me uh, jamming with my family members like my wife on drums. <laughs> She's not a drummer nor am I a singer. And sometimes with my grandson, my granddaughter's making her debut now 20 months on the drum kit. She loves music. She loves to dance when I play. But um, And then you'll see me with some of my mates who are in their 60s. Most of them. But the drum is only 49 that it plays with a few times a year. But I think you're going to enjoy some of those jams, especially if you like the music of the 70s and the 60s. Uh, we do some covers and some originals of songs that I've written in the last five years, sort of rock numbers or blues based numbers. And um, more recent times, I'm starting to uh, stretch myself into some more progressive style music. I'm also learning to play teaching myself to play the bass guitar so keep an eye out for all those things and just remember i'm not a vocalist but i howl like hell because i have a lot of fun doing it and i'm certainly not the world's best guitar player but i think you're going to find some of the stuff really interesting i've done quite a few thousand hours of um, music research songs and music theory over the last um, possibly six years and when i discovered it I've never stopped. You know, I played guitar for um, something like 44 years before I knew any music theory, but I had a hiatus of about uh, 35 years. But I was just playing by ear. I was mainly using the pentatonic, predominantly E minor or A minor pentatonic. But I didn't even know what the word meant at the age of 54. <laughs> 10 years ago, I didn't even know what that word meant. Um, but I could play by ear, you know, we'd, we'd put the old uh, cassette tape into the tape recorder. For those of you my age, you remember what I'm talking about. Or lift the needle and put it on the vinyl, seven single or LP. I used to go through a lot of record needles when I was 14, I tell you that. But <laughs> that's how I learned to play guitar. Edge of my bed, eh? Those are good days. Um, now we have YouTube and all the online stuff to guide us and maniacs like me that try and teach you but my lessons are very easy to understand and um, I think you can really benefit by by viewing them because um, some are good and some are better than the others but as I say um, I give you the information to the best of my ability and I generally do it quite slowly because that's probably the, the best I could at the time and maybe still do it. sometimes I purposefully slow it down. If you look at some of my jams, you'll see I absolutely smoke, smoke it, as some guys say on the fretboard. But when I do the lessons, I tend to slow things down a bit. 
so that you can grasp what I'm doing. And when you learn things, you know, do practice things really slowly. You'll be horrified how slowly your brain actually assimilates information. You need to, like a child, repeat it thousands and thousands of times. So don't feel like an idiot if, you, if you're not used to that. If you can't do it. If you are used to electric guitar, you'll find it will be, you'll find it will actually be easier because the next thinner. Conversely, you might find it more difficult, but once you get used to the neck feel of your chosen guitar, just keep doing it. And I do it on different sides next as well, because you need to get your hands adaptable. So I find when you talk, oh, I love that. Chord. I've been listening to too much classical music. By play by a rock guitarist or that. It's 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 really you need to um, listen to music widely. Don't don't box yourself just to one style of music. Um, some of my recent ideas are coming out of the most unexpected sources. I just hear five or six notes out of a a piece of jazz and I'll turn it in. Mm -hmm into a blues song or I'll turn it into a um, rock progression. You can keep an eye out when I get in the right mood and I normally listen to something in my car while I'm driving. I get inspired by just a few notes that I hear. It might be like a B minor. And I'll turn that into some awesome rock song. In fact, I did one a few months ago and people said as far as away as Russia, a guy wrote to me and said, that was a really good tune you did there. And I was inspired by a, basically a harpsichord or a harp playing that sort of staccato style um, riff. So never close your mind off, keep it open. And you know my motto, get that hand fanned out. It's going to help you to do amazing It's going to get you to do amazing things in time. That, by the way, that's just a series of... I wasn't concentrating. A, a series of um, diminished... Intervals. But um, I can't play and, and concentrate at the same time. I should be able to. You see, I'm going my starting points. If you look at it, I'm, I'm, I'm alternating the starting points on the alternative strings. You can figure that out. Um, thanks for you, and and uh, let, let's get those hours up. Thank you very much, and good luck with your own practice and play. Thanks.